Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be. Welcome to part two of the series Excel for Absolute Beginners. Those of you who watched part one, and if you didn't there is a link to it in the description below, you'll recall that we created a small spreadsheet to add salaries and we saw how we could move around spreadsheets, select cells by clicking on them or using the arrow keys and we also saw that there was a sheet called Sheet 1 which held the information. Now Sheet 1 is a bit generic so we're going to learn how to rename sheets. It's really quite simple. We use the right mouse button by right clicking on the sheet and then we click rename. Now when we click rename we can simply type we'll call it salaries and when we press the enter key there is my new sheet. Now we're using Excel 2013 so to add another sheet I can either click the plus button here which will add a blank new sheet for me I'll delete that sheet by right clicking and delete or I can right click on the existing sheet and choose insert and you'll see in the general tab I can insert a worksheet so we'll do it that way let's click OK you'll notice that uh, the sheet increases in number as I add or delete new sheets and I can also drag sheets by pointing at a sheet with my uh, mouse hold down the left mouse button and simply drag it to wherever I wanted in the list of sheets. Now what we're going to do is to look at how to multi-select cells so that I can do everything at the one time. Particularly for this exercise we're going to look at deleting information in this particular uh, worksheet and I'm going to delete the label salaries by clicking on the cell and then simply pressing the delete key. I'll undo that action by pressing Control Z or Control Z depending on which com uh, country you're uh, looking at this in and that puts it back. Now I don't want to particularly delete one cell at a time so what I can do is to multi-select cells. You'll notice that when I'm in a cell I see the mouse cursor in the shape of an open cross and if I hold down the left mouse button and then drag through the cells that I want to delete I can do so thus and then I simply press the delete key so, so that's how I can multi-select multi cells now let's go to sheet number four by simply clicking on it and we're going to rename this sheet right click and rename and we're going to call it zoos because you'll see that we're going to now create by clicking on a cell uh, the word elephant because what we want to do here is to list three animals lions and tigers and we're going to put the number of animals in the particular zoo so we'll say the first zoo is New York enter takes me down the second zoo is Sydney and the last one we'll say is Amsterdam. There we go. Now notice that because there was no data in B5 this cell here that the word Amsterdam moved across into that particular cell. There was nothing to stop the word from progressing into the next cell but we'll see how we can solve that problem very shortly. Let's put in the numbers first of all. In the New York Zoo there are three elephants we'll say uh, there are <coughs> five lions and there are eight tigers. Now in Sydney we'll say there are five elephants uh, there are six lions and there are three tigers and finally in Amsterdam and watch what happens here because when I click on that cell and enter a number we'll say that there are seven elephants and move away to the next cell that the word Amsterdam has become truncated we're missing the M 
However, in the Amsterdam Zoo, there are something like uh, five lions and there are four tigers. So now when I press enter, there is my spreadsheet. Okay, now Excel has a little bit of magic working behind the contents of cells. This area here is called the formula bar and what it does, it shows me the contents of a cell. So if I click on New York, I see New York. Sydney, Sydney. But if I click on Amsterdam, even though the M is missing from the word in the cell, Excel, through its little bit of magic, knows the full text or data that I've typed into that cell. Now what I want to do is to see all of the word Amsterdam in that cell. And here is where I use the resizing of columns. Up here the columns are labelled A, B, C, D, etc. Uh, alpha characters. And between each of the columns is a little line. And if I point at that a dividing line between the columns I'll see a double headed arrow. If I double click when I see the double headed arrow I am given what is called best fit. That is the widest entry in the column plus a little bit of white space to the right. Let's undo that and I'll show you another technique. I can also hold down my left mouse button and drag to whatever width that I want but I'm going to double click to get best fit. So there we go, nice and easy. In part one, you'll recall that I suggested that the golden rule of all computing was select then do. One reason that we use select then do is to be able to select, as we saw earlier, multiple cells so that when I do something after I've multiply selected it affects all of the cells. So what we're going to do here is to drag through B2 across to D2 thus and then I'm going to increase in the home tab the size of the font to 16. So when I click the drop arrow I'll choose 16 and you'll notice that if I hover my mouse over that command that I see uh, a preview of what would happen when I click. So I'll change everything to 16. Now the problem of course is that the elephants are now not fully visible in terms of the text label. I'm going to multi-select the columns now by dragging through the column headings like that and then double click on any divider line within that selected group and watch what happens. I'm given best fit for each of those particular columns. The widest entry in the columns plus a little bit of space to the to the right. So the elephant column is the widest and the lions are sh slightly wider than the tigers column. Similarly I can do the same with the rows which are numbered numerically. There are over one million of them. To select rows I need to point at the number of the row and when I see the black arrow I can drag down through the uh, rows that, that I want to select thus and now what I'm going to do is to uh, simply increase the size of the font again to 16 for the names of the zoos. What's the problem? Well this time New York's not fully visible neither is Amsterdam because I've made the entries too big for the column. Why don't we double click here to get best fit and there I see when I click away to deselect that my spreadsheet looks nice and neat. Uh, I've got the larger fonts in, uh, in, in columns and also uh, larger fonts in the rows. Now let's look again at the formula bar. I like to think of it as the cell content bar as well. And now when I click on any of the zoo names it doesn't show me the font size, it purely shows me the contents of each of the cells. So it's nice and easy. 
Okay, now if I'm in a big spreadsheet, and this is a, obviously quite a small one for practice sake, if I'm in a big spreadsheet, let's say I was down here somewhere in this cell, and I want to go back <coughs> to the very start of the worksheet, what I can do is to use a keyboard shortcut by holding down the control key and then pressing the home button on the keyboard and that always takes me back to cell A1. It's a very quick way to get back to the very start of the spreadsheet. Now you remember that we clicked on this cell down here somewhere. I think it was that one there from memory. So let's go control home and control end takes me to the last used data cell in the spreadsheet. So again I can control home or control end to quickly move to where I want to go to at the start or the bottom of the data in the worksheet. Now finally in this upload we're going to add the numbers of elephants, lions and tigers and I'm going to put a uh, label in here called total and I'm now going to click where I want the total and I'm going again to the home tab and over on the far right in the editing group I see the Greek letter Sigma which is the auto sum button and as the tooltip says it automatically adds things up your totals will appear after the selected cells so let's click and Excel guesses that they are the cells that I want to add it looks up the column by default and it says are there two or more cells that I can add if there are all you need to do is to press control enter or just enter because control enter keeps you in the same cell enter would have taken me down a cell and again I'm going to do the same thing with this particular column control enter and again I'm going to do the same with the Tigers. Now I did each of those individually. That takes too much time. So why don't we delete what is in those cells by pressing the delete key after selecting them and this time with them selected I'm going to click the auto sum button again and watch what happens in those cells. Excel automatically adds for me those particular numbers. I don't have to do anything, just select where I want the answers to be. OK, in the next upload, which will be part 3 of Excel for Absolute Beginners, we're going to look at the construction of formulas, how they work, the rules that we need to observe, because if I click on one of the cells with the formula and look up here in the formula bar, it looks like uh, some Egyptian hieroglyphics equal sum bracket B3 colon B6 close the bracket and we need very importantly to learn how formulas work and are constructed in Excel spreadsheets bear in mind that the thing that we do most of all is to add numbers so we'll be looking at the sum function in depth along with a couple of its uh, cousins average and count that you'll see so remember to subscribe and you'll be automatically notified of uh, when part 3 is uh, uploaded this particular file will be available for you to download for free for, for practice sake if you wish at the link shown in the description below before we go let's see how we can delete a sheet I'm going to right click on the sheet, salaries, we don't need it anymore, and then delete. You'll be asked to confirm the deletion because we can't undo a deleted sheet. So let's click delete, and there we are, we're le left with our worksheet called Zoos. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to practice, that's really the name of the game. Remember the golden rule of all computing is select then do, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.